Look at all these fresh mangoes. I can't wait to make this wine and show you this video. Mango heaven. If you could smell these, these are so ripe. We're ready to get started. We're making mango wine today. Don't miss this video. And make sure you're clicking that like and subscribe button because this video is way overdue. It's gonna be your new favorite. Said, friend, you know I love this city, but sometimes you have to excuse me. I let myself get lost up in my mind. We're gonna make mango wine. Look at this. I'm gonna make a three gallon batch, but I'm gonna put the recipe down there for the one gallon, three gallon, and five gallon in the description so you don't have to do any calculations. So, how do we get this wine started? That's number one. Well, you gotta have good mangoes. It's mango season. That runs from May to September. So these are everywhere right now in my hometown. But what you wanna do is you wanna get your mangoes that are just kind of turning yellowish. That's what you want. You want a little bit of give when you push on this. That's how you know it's right. So these are all ready to go. And we're ready to slice these things up and get them cut and start this mango wine. You don't want to miss this video. It's going to be a favorite of yours for sure. All right, you can see here, I got my ingredients out to get this mango wine started. I'm going to show you how to use each one of these individually as we go through this video. But this is what you need to make mango wine. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna to wanna to get our sanitizer mixed up. You know, making wine, sanitation is critical. So I use Star San, I got a half ounce mix measured out here, and we're gonna add it to the bucket, and we're gonna get some warm water in here. All right, so we got our sanitizer mixed in. We added two and a half gallons of water. That's the batch I always usually make because I'll have extra of this. So now what we want to do is we want to get some of our equipment sanitized. The first thing I want to do is fill up this spray bottle because as we're stirring this must for the next seven to 10 days, this comes in handy to sterilize our equipment when we're stirring it. So that you need. The next thing I'm going to throw in two spoons because they're great for crushing up Camden tablets. We got our measuring spoons, throw them in there. We've got our hydrometer. You got to have this because we want to see what this ABV alcohol by volume is going to come out to. Then we got our stir paddle. We want to throw that in. That's, that's a definite must. And since we're making fruit, we want to use a mesh bag. We want to get all that pulp out as possible before we rack it. It's just going to save us a lot of time. I got links to all this stuff in the description. So make sure if you need any of this, check out those links. You also want to sanitize the containers you're going to put your fruit in. I'll just use this spray bottle for this part of it, but that's what you want to do. You want to sanitize your equipment. I got a cutting board. We're going to sanitize this. Now in making wine, you know by now you need sugar because that's what you need to convert sugar into alcohol. We need two pounds per gallon. So uh, since I'm doing a three ga gallon batch, I'm going to use six pounds of sugar. Let's get it weighed. So now we want to get this sugar on the stove. We want to dissolve this because it's going to make your yeast work more efficient. So I'm adding my six pounds of sugar here. And then what I'm going to do is we're just going to cover this with some water with about the same amount. So here we go. We're going to add some water in here. And that's probably about a gallon. So I added another, about another half gallon. There's no exact measurement at this point. We wanna get this sugar dissolved. And then what we'll do is we'll add more water when we adjust that ABV up and down. You'll see what I mean here in that next part of the video, but let's get the heat on. We wanna get this dissolved. All right, so I'm gonna just stir this sugar in. And what that you're looking for, you don't want to be scraping any sugar, which this will be close to the boiling point when this gets dissolved. And then we'll shut off and we'll let this cool to room temperature. All right, you can see, hopefully you can see this, but I can now see the bottom of this. It's not boiling, which you don't want to do. You don't want to burn this sugar. As long as I'm not scraping sugar and I see the bottom, it's time to shut the heat off 
and let this cool to room temperature. All right, now it's time to cut some of this fruit. So if you never cut a mango, I find this is the best way to do it. You wanna take your mango, there's two sides. You can see this is the thinner side, then that's the, the wider. You wanna let sit it like this, and we wanna do what's called cheek cuts. And we wanna go off center a little bit, like a half inch, and we're just trying to graze that pit that's down in here. Um, so let's see if we can get a cheek cut. I'm off center here by about a half inch, and that's one side. Now, we got fairly close to that pit, and then we wanna do the same thing to this side. And I'm gonna show you something here. You can see we're hitting the pit there. Just move it over a little bit, get the rest. So you can see that's the white pit. That's what we're trying to get. So we got to our two cheek cuts. Now what I wanna show you is we wanna salvage some of this on the side. So I'm just gonna follow the pit and you can see I'm hitting it right there. And we wanna just try and salvage some of this stuff that's on the outside by, by going around like this. And that's it. This is when you take a bite. Oh my God, that's so sweet. So we got our two cheek cuts here and we got our two end pieces. So now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna cut this with a paring knife to remove the skin. Chunk this up and put it in our bowl and then that's what we'll use for our must. We'll do the same to this piece. So now we got our cheek pieces. So all we wanna do now is we wanna uh, put this into squares. You wanna cut down on here in pieces and we're, we're not going through the bottom of the skin. That's what we don't wanna do. Okay, so you can see I'm doing, I'm scoring it and then I'm going the other direction. And again, we're not going through the skin at this point. Now what you wanna do is you wanna turn this inside out like that. And you see all the little pieces and you can take a spoon or you can just pull them like this and separate the fruit from the skin. Because again, we don't want any skin in this particular wine. We just want fruits. This looks like cheese, doesn't it? I like to drain that juice off because that's what you want. And we'll flip it in and that's it. And we'll do this, we'll separate this and we'll do all these mangoes. And I won't bore you with that part, but it's gonna be the same process for all of this fruit. And if you could smell this mango, it smells amazing. Now, one thing, what we need here is we're trying to get to three to four pounds per gallon. That's what we want. So for my three gallon batch, I'm gonna need nine to 12 pounds of mango. Look at all this mango. It smells amazing. Look at all this mango I got. I chopped them all up. I could have made a five gallon batch, but I got way more than I need. Remember, I want nine to 12 pounds of this for my three gallon batch. Look at that. That's the mango smoothie. It's got banana, mango, ice, fresh homemade vanilla. Uh, I put some chia seeds in there. Make sure you try that. I needed a break after cutting all this up and it tastes amazing. But anyway, I need to weigh three to four gallons. I'm gonna freeze some of this because I like to put it in my smoothies in the morning, but let's get it weighed out three to four pounds per gallon, nine to 12 for this. Let's get it weighed out. All right, and these little scales come in handy when you're trying to measure fruit. And this is, this bowl is heavy. You probably can't see this, but I got it down to 11 pounds and that's what I want. That's perfect, nine to 12. That'll make this a bold mango wine with extra fruit flavor. All right, we're ready to get some chemicals in. Make sure you're sanitizing your bucket and you're sanitizing your lid all over. This is key, you must do this or you're gonna have disastrous results. So I'll let that sit on there, then I'll just drain this out, but now we're ready to get some chemicals in. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put acid blend. Now I got a whole video, if you don't have some of this stuff, watch one of my other videos, I'll put a link in the description of what you can change and, and if you can't get this, what to use. So watch that video. So I'm doing a three, 
gallon batch, so I want three of these half teaspoons. And I always like to put it at the bottom of my bucket. It's not required, you can put it at the top. But I just find, you know, it's easier to, to mix once I get the fruit and you add that fruit in and it's help mixing it. So there we go. The next thing we want is yeast nutrient. I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of this per gallon. So I need three of these. Yeast nutrient. This is just gonna help that yeast get going. All right, the next thing, you, you gotta put tannins in your wine. It's just gonna make it more flavorful. So I got wine tannin. We're gonna take three half teaspoons of this, a half a teaspoon per gallon. So I want three of these. Next one, pectic enzyme, a half a teaspoon per gallon. So three gallon batch, three of these. The next thing, Camden tablets. I've got Three of these, one per gallon. We're gonna crush them up between two spoons. That's the easiest way. All right, two sanitized spoons, crush these up and put them in our bucket. There we go, three of them. So we got all our additives in here. We're ready to get the fruit. I don't know if you can't see that. Right there's what they look like at the bottom. All right, so now we got our sanitized mesh bag. This is required, in my opinion, if you don't wanna do a lot of work. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this mesh bag here. A lot of you have given me some great ideas. You know, put clothespins to hold this down or a, a, you know, one of those rubber snubber deals. But I don't feel like going, going to get one right now. So I'm just gonna put this in an ease, slow and easy just so the bag doesn't go in. So let's get the fruit in here. Remember, I got 11 pounds of fruit going in this three gallon batch. I'll just slowly put it in a little bit and then eventually I'll just dump this in. But man, if you could smell these mangoes, they are probably one of the best mangoes I've ever had. I, I guess it's because they're in season and they are just so fresh, so sweet. This wine is gonna be great. And I want to say thank you to the subscriber who grows these. He's got a mango farm and he's trying to teach his employees how to make wine out of his fruit because he's got so many of these. I wish I lived near him. This video is for him I, I, and, and everybody else because it's just a great wine to make. It will become your new favorite, I promise. And I don't know if that farmer is listening, but one thing I kind of wanted to say, you saw me how I was cutting those, those, uh, this mango up and putting it in here. I'm sure he's got some kind of special machine to do it. So there we go. I'm just gonna dump the rest in, see what happens. Look at that. All right, the next thing, we got all our fruit in here. Somebody was also asking, can you reuse these mess bags? For sure. You can see I no longer have this string on mine. This will probably be the last batch I get out of this one because it's probably going through maybe 10 batches of wine and it's seen its better days and I got a bunch of over there. So now what I'd like to do is you twist this up and then I like to put a sanitized twist tie on here. What this does is it will keep that pulp from coming out of this bag. You don't want that to happen. In fact, I got two of them. I'm gonna put another one on just because I got one and I'll cut these ends off because they tend to get in your way when you're stirring this each day. All right, so we got everything cinched up. We got the bag, we got the additives in here. We're ready to add that sugar water. Remember the sugar water we started to get dissolved? We wanna add that here now. That's what's gonna get the yeast excited. Now, remember it's a three gallon batch. I can look at my bucket here three gallons is probably gonna come up to about here. So I'm gonna slowly add water and we're gonna take, take our readings for our ABV. I usually wanna get it between nine and 12%. I've made 14%. You just never know, each fruit can be different. So we'll just add water till we get the potential alcohol where we want it. All right, remember, you wanna put water in a little bit at a time, take your readings. That water level, according to the outside in my bucket, is about two gallon. And I know this is gonna, just from experience, I'm gonna need probably somewhere between three and four gallon le level, because remember, there's a gallon of fruit in here. So you gotta compensate for that. So I would expect it to get to four gallon when we take the bag out, 
we'll hopefully wind up with around three. And a little more, and then I'm going to take a reading of this, see where we're at. All right, so I added a little more water, and what I'm going to do, remember we got the chemicals at the bottom. Now's a good time if you want to just try and get them mixed up. You'll be stirring this many different times for the next couple days. So you can see uh, some of the, you see how dark this is getting? It doesn't look like wine, it kind of looks like dirty water, but that's from the tannin, that will go away. All right, so I'm gonna take another reading. I think it's gonna still be way high, but that's what we want. You wanna do this very slow. So it's a little less than 15 right now. So I'm gonna put a little more water. Like I said, I know about where it's gonna come up just from experience, and you'll, you'll figure that out too as you go along in this hobby. Extra water. All right, that's reading 14%. So we're getting a little closer. I'm a little bit shy of the four gallon mark on the outside of my bucket. So it's going as expected. So I'm just gonna add a little water. I could go with 14%. That's just a little bit high for my wife and I. A little more water. All right, one final reading here. And I'll get you a close up this, but it is literally about 12 and a half percent. That is perfect. That's where I want it. That's where I'm going to stop. We're ready to get this sealed up. All right, so here we go. I'm going to give it one final little bit of stir here. And I'm going to get the lid on. But you know what? I'm going to do a video because I, there's a lot of confusion on oxygen in your wine. And in primary fermentation, you want your yeast to have oxygen. You're not trying to keep it totally out. Yeast needs the oxygen to, to keep going. And, and you also got to keep your fruit moist. You don't want to get moldy in there. So that's why you're going to see me stir this every day until fermentation is done because I want oxygen to get in there. Oxygen becomes your enemy in part two where you're going to your secondary. That's when you want to shut it off. You want to keep as much out in this primary as you can, but it's not, you know, a deal breaker. You want your fruit and your yeast to be able to breathe. It's, it's critical that you get some oxygen in here, and that's why we're going to stir it each day. So there we go. I got this stirred in. I got my sanitized lid here. We're gonna put this on. We're gonna seal it. I'm kind of in a bad spot here. Hang on. All right, we're gonna seal it. And then you gotta make sure you put your sanitized lock, air lock in here. If you have one of these type, there's a line that goes down the middle. That's where you want it. With those Camden tablets, we wanna get that wild yeast eliminated because that can cause problems. We want to use the yeast that's produced for winemaking. That is the best quality. Don't use the wild yeast. You want to get rid of that. So 24 hours from now, I'll be back and we're going to get that yeast in. And then the wine process will start converting all that sugar that's in here into alcohol, which makes your wine. Stay tuned. I'll see you in 24. All right, so it's been 24 hours. It's time to open this up, get it stirred, and put our yeast in after 24 hours. Oh man, if you could smell this mango. I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. So I got this paddle sanitized. We got our Red Star wine yeast, which I love. All right, so. Got that stirred up a little bit. All right, there's no need to mix this in. I'm just going to sprinkle it right on where I see the liquid, the whole way around. And I'm not going to stir it in. We're just going to cover it up like that. We'll be back in another 24 hours, and we will stir this every single day until fermentation or the bubbler stops, which is here. So let's get it sealed up. And I'll see you tomorrow. All right, here we go. Let's get this stirred. I think you're going to see a lot of foaming in here. Look at that. That's what you want. That means your yeast is working. Oh, and this mango wine smells so good. That's it. That's all you want to do. Keep the fruit moist. Get the lid back on.
All right, I don't know if you can see it, but it's already started bubbling and it's only been 24 hours. We're going to open this up, see what it looks like and give it a stir. You can see a little bit of the foam there, but you can see the yeast on here. This is why we want to stir it. Foam is good. I'm not going to bore you with stirring this every single day. This will take seven to 10, maybe 14 days. But we're making mango wine. Look at this. So that's it. We're just giving it, keeping our fruit moist. All right, so here we go. It's been about 10 days. You can see the airlock is really slowed down a crawl. You might see a bubble there every minute. But what we're going to do now is we got to get this opened up and we got to get it wrecked, racked into our secondary. Remember, this is the primary. We get it over here, we're taking the fruit out and that's the secondary stage. Let's get the ABV measure because we want to make sure it's red. So here's where this cylinder comes in handy. I'm going to fill this up here with some wine so we can float our hydrometer in and get exact readings. My bucket's not deep enough to do that. So that's when you want to go to this. So without making a mess. So we got our sand and dries hydrometer here. We're going to drop this in. And what we're trying to do is get to 1.0 specific gravity, which is all the way up here. This thing should drop all the way down. So if we got to that, if you remember, this started at 12.5% ABV. If we get to the 1.0, we know that that's what it's going to be. Now I'll get a close up here, but it's perfect 1.0. We're ready to get it racked over to our secondary. All right, we're gonna get the carboy down here and we're ready to open this wine. Remember, keep it covered when you're not racking or anything. And I got the racking cane over here and we're just gonna get this to the side of the bucket. You don't wanna stir this at this point. Remember, there's dead yeast at the bottom here. We wanna try and get most of that out if we can. All right, we got the hose down here. You could smell this. It smells incredible. Let's get the siphon going. And there we go. Now, a lot of you have asked, why don't I squeeze the pulp out of this bag? I get a lot of questions on that because you're trying to get as much pulp out as possible. So we don't want to introduce small fine particles that are going to go through that mesh bag. This recipe accounts for plenty of juice and fruit to get this wine to where we want it. So now let's just get it down there. I will just let gravity take the juice out of the pulp. That's all we need to get this carboy filled up. So look, we finished it. I tell you, this came out perfect, as you'll see from my uh, carboy here. But look, this is what we got left in the primary fermentation. You see all that dead yeast down there? That's what I mean. You don't want to get that. You want to get as much out as you can in this step. All right, you can see I put the airlock on immediately, but this is a little higher than I'd like. So I want to get it a little bit down. So I'm just going to take some because you want to taste this as you go through this hobby. So I'm just going to take a couple drops of this to take the level down. This is where you can adjust it because I don't want that cooking out into my airlock. So that's why I'm doing this. It was a little higher than I wanted. So we're just going to take a little out and taste it. So there it is. That's how easy it is to get to the primary to the secondary stage. We are now going to let this sit in the basement for 30 days before we rack this. After that first racking, we'll see how clear it is whether we want to add the bentonite or not. Here is the sample. Make sure you're tasting your stuff through the different stages. You want to see what it tastes like as it ages. So let's see. That's a very dry wine, and that's what I expect because we got it down to that 1.0 specific gravity. That means the sugar's all gone. So once we back sweeten it, it will bring out that mango taste. It's going to be a great batch. The color is incredible. See you in 30 days. Make sure you're clicking that like and subscribe button for part two. See you soon. Take some time, remember tonight, sitting by the fire.